My friends, welcome to St. Ignatius Parish. I invite all to stand and to face our wreath in the center of the church. We gather today on this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday. And we gather as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Christ who was, who is, and who is to come, peace be with you all. And with your spirit. In the gospel today, we will hear about a God of joy and provision as we mark the third Sunday of our pilgrimage toward Christmas. And so we rejoice in the promise of God's kingdom and labor to realize our hope for a world that is on the way of redemption. A world where everyone will have a safe, warm home, where war in Ukraine will end, where a just and lasting peace will be realized in the Middle East, where Earth and all ecosystems are healthy. And so we light this, the third candle in our Advent wreath, marked with pink. This color is a sign of our joyful hope that light will rise in the darkness and the gloom become like midday as we participate in the creative and saving actions of Jesus. a village. <laughs> we follow this light, trusting that our God will renew us in great love. And as we go forward singing together, I invite you, those of you who are children who would like to go to the children's liturgy of the word, the clo follow behind us and meet us at the altar. Join together in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which is found on page two of your order of worship.
My friends, we come to this day, this day of rejoicing, and we are blessed by the great joy of these young people who will go off now to study the word, to co draw closer, to know that they too are a part of this joy as we get ready for the welcoming of Jesus into our world. So I ask you to open your hearts. I ask you all to join with me and to receive our blessing as you go. May God open you to the joy and love which Jesus has for you. May you, pay, may you attend to the word and be blessed and know that you go with our love and care. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And what do you say? Amen. 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 You guys have it already. Thank you. See you soon. And so let us pray. O oh God, who sees how your people faithfully await the feast of the North, oh Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joy of so great a salvation and to celebrate always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated to listen to the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to My soul rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices in my God, my soul
just fill the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances, test everything, retain what is good, refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may your entirety, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted, and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you so that we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize the one who is coming after me, 
whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This has been one of those weeks um, where reading the news made me feel very much in sync with uh, the weather, especially when it's cold and overcast and the sun seems to go down uh, before I'm ready for it to do so. I look at the cold and the darkness of the world and it seems to almost overwhelm me. I feel, uh, I read about the terrible violence in Gaza the people displaced and so many thousands killed, so many children killed or displaced. I read about the Israeli uh, prisoners who have been taken by a terrible terrorist act. And the things seem to come together in a, in, in a horrific moment when the, the three escaping hostages are killed by their own soldiers. I read about the rates of homelessness and our rates of poverty, child poverty in our own country that have doubled since the end of the pandemic as, as special programs for the pandemic are withdrawn, more and more children are cast into poverty in our own country. I read about New York, which is closing shelters because they are overwhelmed by refugees some who come directly to New York and many who are sent from other states in our country. I read about the, the meeting uh, on the environment and the failure of people to really make the steps, the wealthy nations to make the steps that they need to, to save our earth. I read all this and I see all this and I feel, boy, I am in an Advent place a place of twilight and darkness, sort of the evening of the day, the whole world, across this world, it gets darker sooner. Across this hemisphere, it gets uh, colder as we move toward winter and as we move toward the solstice, and I feel this is Advent. It is a twilight time, a purple light, perfect for where, where the world seems to be and where my heart seems so easily to go. And then the church interferes with my perfect, deep, quiet, evening feeling and tells me, rejoice. Rejoice, it says, rejoice, gaudete, which is, if you know any Latin, it's the command form, the imperative. Rejoice. It isn't a choice. It isn't an invitation. It's a command. And so, here I am, dressed in the pink of the dawn, when I had been so comfortable in the twilight of the purple. And we are called to this. We are summoned to it to rejoice in the midst of all that the world has going for it. In a time of the year when any wise bear is heading toward hibernation, we are called to rejoice, to go out and to speak and to proclaim that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. How are we to do this? How can this be? When the world seems so cold, the, the earth seems so cold, and the, and the news seems so dark. We are called to this, called the way, the way John the Baptist is called into the desert, called the way that Mary is called to give birth to her son, the way that Joseph is called to care for a child he knows is not his own. We are called to this. Rejoice. But how? How is that possible? Out of unfathomable love, God chooses to enter this world. But God chooses to enter this world not with armies of angels, not with a host of angels, not with light shining everywhere, not driving out the darkness by the, the heavenly hosts and the heavenly armies before him. God chooses to enter the world not in that way, but in darkness. In the darkness of a human womb, 
God begins to enter this world. God begins that journey from egg to, to uh, fetus, from fetus to infant. God enters the world in this slow growth, protected only by the warmth, the warmth provided by his mother, the protection provided by his stepfather, the light given only by those small band of hobos and miscreants that seem to surround him. And Christ grows there in a community of love, in a community of care that must protect him and must rescue him. And as with Christ, so also with us. We enter this world cared for in the nurtured by the life of one in darkness. And we are fed and we are safeguarded and we are brought forth into a community which continues to nurture us and help us to grow in the painfulness, of, in the pain of this world, in the struggles of these times, we are held and we also hold each other. We give each other our warmth and our light. We bring each other forward or there is no protection, there is no safeguard. We come to give the light that has been given to us to bear the light that we ourselves have received from generations before us. The light that comes into this world, the light that gives us hope is the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. Each of us anointed, just as Christ was anointed in the womb just as Mary was anointed by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, just as Joseph was anointed by his dreams or John was called forth into the desert, each of us has been anointed and has been inflamed with the message of the gospel. We wait for Jesus, but this is not make-believe. This is like, oh, well, maybe Christmas hasn't happened. Christmas has happened. We wait for the coming to remember that first incarnation, but we know the fullness of the incarnation is on its way. The second coming, as we sometimes refer to it, but the second coming is ongoing right now. We are in the darkness of that womb of Christ being born in the world, and we are the nurturance. We are the light. We are the life given out. This is what we are called to see today. That the life of God is at work in us. In every act of kindness and mercy that we, in, that we do, God shines forth. The light begins. In every act of humanity or compassion, every time we welcome a stranger or a refugee, every time we invite in someone who is lost, and give them comfort, or someone who has lost a loved one, and hold them up. Every time we refuse to allow war to become defining of us, every time we stand up against the anti-Semitism, which would tear down that symbol, that wonderful symbol, the menorah, the sign of God's blessing and hope, torn down in, in Oakland this week, and thrown into the water, every time we refuse to put up with that, we refuse to give in to anti-Semitism, we refuse to give in to Islamophobia. We refuse to give in to racism or to hatred of those who people tell us we should hate. Every time we refuse the darkness, we become part of the light of Christ, the new birth coming to be. We live out our anointing and we find the reason for our rejoicing. We rejoice this weekend not because the darkness doesn't exist, but because the darkness doesn't win. The darkness will not win. That light stands against the dark and the dark is overcome. And we are that light, each of us and all of us together, especially all of us together. When we stand as a community of love, a community of hope, a community of welcome, a community which wants to heal the earth and heal the relationships with on this earth, we give light and warmth to those in need of it. This is why we rejoice. Not because we have overcome the darkness, 
but because the darkness cannot overcome us. Christ is being born. Christ is coming. Christ is sitting here among us now in each of our hearts, the flame that burns in us and longs to be one with us and one with our world. Rejoice. Stand with me, friends. I think we could use a few volunteers to help with the collection. If you're able to do that, that would be much appreciated. So just go to the back of the church. So my friends, believing in the light that has come into our world and the light that is coming into our world, let us profess together. I invite you to open your order of worship and let us say the creed which comes from the baptismal creed of the people of Rome that we might renew our own baptismal blessing and say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So my friends, as we pray in joy for the coming of the light, let us open our hearts, trusting that God hears us, that God wants to be among us, and let us bring our prayers and needs before our God. For the church, that it be animated, lively, and inspiring joy in people across the whole earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, we pray for an end to all war and ask that hope be renewed in the hearts of all who are suffering in Ukraine and in the Middle East and that common sense, reason, and compassion guide the decisions of those in power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions written in the book at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that our loving mother lift hearts heavy with worry and sorrow, and for all our beloved faithful departed, especially Charles Bravo, Rosa Mercedes Diaz, Armas, and Ziada Maria Millan, Carol Bedotto, and John Petty that they be found rejoicing in the full revelation of the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that we call forward the gifts of people with disabilities in our community so that we may strive toward liberation together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope and joy, hear the prayers of your people, the prayers we speak aloud, the prayers that echo in the quiet of our hearts. Help us who wait to approach the dawn and to trust in its coming. Receive these petitions that we have offered and gather us to yourself through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to be seated. In just a moment, our collection will be taken up. I invite you, I just want to say thank you for all those of you who give to our collection. It is a wonderful way to support the ministry and the mission of our parish. And uh, I'm just deeply appreciative for the generosity of this community. Everything you give, we try to use for good. Uh, for those of you joining us online, you can find a link in the chat for the Sunday collection. Thank you as well.
As our gifts are gathered and prepared, please join in singing Make Your Home in Me, which can be found on page six of your order of worship. Stand and pray with me, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty One. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. In the sacrifice of our worship, O God, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, we are uh, remaining standing during the entire Eucharistic prayer. We don't have kneelers in the whole church, and we all want to have the same posture. This, uh, if you need to be seated, of course you can, but this ancient posture of the church is what we are undertaking. 
My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O God, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, for through the, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O God, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh God, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offerings of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ignatius and with all the saints 
on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing hope, help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh God, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the women and men who minister in your name, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful God, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the joy that drives away the darkness, let us sing out in the words our Savior has taught us. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the power of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the joyful hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your disciples, to us, peace I leave with you, peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My friends, before we come to this table of joy and mercy, let us remember and pray with our friends at home that we may all be of one spirit and one communion. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken, the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ, the church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. Amen. May the body and blood of Christ bring all people to eternal life. As we are united through the body and blood of the Lord, join together in singing Come Lord Maranatha, which can be found on page 10 of your order of worship.
O God, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you can imagine, at this time of year, there are a few announcements. So, the uh, please bring your wrapped. Uh, Gifts of the Magi to the 4 p.m. Family Mass on Christmas Eve. This year, our parish family is once again supporting the Epiphany Center. The Midnight Mass this year will be celebrated at 11 p.m., the Mass in the night. 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Uh, it will. This is a new time, so just to make note of that. Uh, it will begin at 11 and will be preceded by wonderful carols and singing, so please come at 10.30 to enjoy that. We are in great need of greeters and Eucharistic ministers for all our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses. Please come into the sanctuary after Mass and just talk to Maggie. Don't come in right now, but wait until after Mass. Sign up or log on to the ministry scheduler and volunteer now. That would be wonderful. Just to let you know, the parish offices will be closed on December 26th. We will have Mass in the morning, but the offices will be closed after that. Uh, 2024 St. Ignatius Parish cal calendars full of beautiful watercolors are available in the bookstore. And free calendars, if you want free calendars, they're available on the Parker Avenue door. They're not the same calendar. The beautiful ones are in the bookstore. Go get those. Uh, please be sure to join us for hospitality after Mass. Also, the bookstore is open after Mass until 5 p.m. today. For those of you at home, uh, much thanks for your tuning in, and I hope we, if we don't see you at uh, Christmas in person, we hope that you will have a chance to watch Christmas Mass. Also, if you took a, a tag for the, uh, for the Advent Giving Tree, we tried to get them all before this Mass, but if you still have a few, we're trying to get them all in so we can sort them and make sure they're distributed in a timely fashion. Thank you. Excuse me, Father John. How we, our liturgical environment committee took a hit through the pandemic. We lost two of our key players who know how to operate our genie lift. And this week we're going to start bringing all of the Christmas magic into the church. And we are still in need of two to four hands on Monday and Tuesday during the day. So if you are um, uh, up for an adventure, if you're maybe a little bit handy or crafty, or if you're interested on being trained on our genie lift, please see me after liturgy. That will help us make everything come together beautifully. Many hands make light work. And since Maggie got to add an announcement, I will just, just to clarify for people, 
next Sunday, we have the Vigil Mass on Saturday night at 5, and we have an 8 a.m. and a 10 a.m., which will be the fourth Sunday of Advent. Then, just a few hours later at 4 p.m., voila, we begin the Christmas cycle with the 4 p.m. and the schedule for the Christmas Masses is in the bulletin. But just so you know, we will have a fourth Sunday of Advent, much abbreviated. So if you feel like going to Mass twice, please come join us. We'll be here. I, I will certainly be here. My friends, we are sent into the world to be light and to rejoice because Christ is coming and Christ is here in all of us. Let us stand and ask that we might receive that blessing as we go on our way. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit, Father Tom. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go to proclaim God's love in our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. People Look East can be found on page 11 of your order of worship. Please return your orders of worship to the cubbies as you depart. <laughs>